Is enrollment down? If so, how much? And is it because of the pandemic or did it start before the pandemic? Yeah, recent numbers on enrollment rates suggest that enrollment is down. This is the sixth year that enrollment is down. So it was starting to decline before the pandemic took hold, but the pandemic knocked a lot of high schoolers and young adults off their college going plans. So we hear a lot, David, about the learning loss in elementary schools and high schools. I think another thing we really have to be focused on is how many graduating seniors would have otherwise enrolled in college who haven't and they haven't come back yet. So this is concerning. And how much of it's the cost of the whole thing? Because you saw that Wall Street Journal poll that said something like 56% of Americans don't believe a college degree is worth the price. Yeah, that I found those polling numbers really quite troubling. So as you mentioned, a majority, a small majority, but a majority nonetheless of American adults now doubt that a college degree is worth it. And, and that is just, it's, that's just emphatically not true. So in general, people who graduate with a four-year college degree will make back the amount of money that if they made good decisions that they would have paid to get that degree. So a college degree is still, you know, an excellent investment in one's economic future. We know that college degree holders, four-year college degree holders in particular, have an easier time finding work. They command much higher earnings when they do work, um, even in today's tight labor market. Uh, but as you mentioned, the price is really, it's hard to figure out. And so a lot of people actually think getting a college degree would be more expensive than it would be for them in particular. Melissa, you mentioned the relative lack of transparency on exactly knowing what the cost is. It's hard to do a cost-benefit analysis if you don't know what the cost side is, whatever the benefit side is. Why is it so uh, opaque? They have their sticker price, their tuition price. That's their all-in price, what they charge people who can pay full price. That's also what they charge the government for people who are paying on behalf of others. Um, but that's not what an individual student pays. So about three quarters of students at four-year institutions are getting some form of aid. And so it's just really hard for students to figure out until they've gone through the whole process of applying for financial aid, filling out the FAFSA, how much any individual school will take. There are a lot of efforts underway to make that pricing more transparent so students can figure out earlier in the process. But I think the, the real message that needs to get out is that Students should not be discouraged from applying to flagship schools, selective four-year schools, because they think they can't afford it. They should go through the process. Students who go to selective schools, who go to four-year degree-seeking, you know, degree-granting schools, they tend to have better outcomes. Those schools often have more resources and are better able to serve their students. So students should not be discouraged from applying, and they should take advantage of information that's out there net cost calculators, information on student on school websites to figure out what on average is a typical student paying to attend this school. And by the way, people should make smart choices. Like public schools charge a lot less than private schools. So getting back to why a lot of people don't think a school is worth it or pursuing a college degree is worth it, you know, the, you could get a lot of really good deals if you're looking at public four-year institutions as opposed to private, especially if you're looking at in-state tuition. Those net prices are much lower for typical students, and people should take that into account when they decide where to go. So, so typically in economics, as I understand it, you understand it much better than I do, in supply and demand, if the supply starts to come down, it might put some pressure on the system. If, in fact, we're getting less enrollment, do you see any indication some of these institutions of higher learning are saying, you know, we've got to get our act together, we've got to be, for example, more transparent, more direct, and by the way, even give a sense over the four years what's going to happen in the out years, because one issue is how much you're going to raise it once I get in. Unambiguously, the decline in the enrollment is not an encouraging trend. Um, whatever pressures it might put on some schools that are losing students, I think the decline in enrollment is really troubling because, as we said, a college degree really does grant an earnings premium to students who attend and complete a four-year degree. So the, the earnings premium going to college workers was rising tremendously in the 1980s and 1990s when demand for college-level skills really took off and the supply of college-educated workers didn't keep up. Since 2000, that wage premium has stalled, 
but importantly, it is still tremendously high. So in a typical year, you know, let's just take 2019 before the pandemic, you know, the, uh, someone with a four-year college degree on average would make about 88% more a year than a full-time full-year worker with just a high school degree. When you talk about the earnings premium, it, it surely must depend in part upon what you study and what the line of work you go into, right? I mean, I can just imagine, for example, what the demands are right now for sort of technology and some of the expertise in technology uh, are very different from what they were 30 years ago. Absolutely. And this is a really important point. So in general, even though I'm really emphasizing that a college degree is a good investment in one's future, the fact of the matter is not all institutions and not all majors deliver large earnings premiums. And that, again, is something that students have to take into account and have to make good decisions about where they're studying and what they're studying. And that information, too, is now much more readily available um, than it used to be in the past. Students can look up what is the typical earning path for someone who pursues this major, who attends this institution, uh, and, and again, make smart choices. So, Melissa, as you look at the decline in enrollment, what about the demographics of it? Is, is it affecting some people more than others? Yeah, the decline in enrollment has been much larger among men than women, uh, which is, you know, <laughs> women are doing better overall when it, when it comes to young women getting college degrees, and so this is worrisome. And the pandemic-related decline was especially pronounced among non-white men. Uh, again, this is another, you know, this is another reason why these trends are particularly worrisome. We think a college degree is a great engine of upward mobility, and we worry if kids from lower-income homes, from um, non-white families in particular, are the ones who disproportionately had their college-going plans knocked off track.